First, we're going to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Daisuke Yoshida. I'm a second year AOT and the prefecture of Ahime, which is on the Shikoku Island. Do you have any Shikoku people here? Yeah. All right, represent. Welcome. Okay. Um, as you can see, we have a list of prefectures up here. I'm from Ahime. So I'm going to introduce quickly a unique, bizarre food that I encountered in my prefecture. One of it is clementine flavored udon. Um, it was very interesting to eat this noodle dish that had a citrus sensation. Um, it was quite interesting. But I recommend, if you guys come across it, please eat it. And as you can see, there's fish sperm. Yes, it's called shirako, or the kanji is white kids. Um, I was actually tricked by my BOE to eat it. They told me it was white sea urchin. And I love sea urchin. And I was like, all right, I'm going to eat this. And it was very, very creamy. <laughs> Hey guys, there's some stuff here. Alright, we're going to uh, introduce our other presenters here. Thank you, Daisuke. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Asher Ramres, and I am an ALT in Kagoshima Prefecture down in Kyushu, Kagoshima. Woo! Oh, okay, alright, hello. Uh, I'm also been going into my second year, and uh, in this first year as an ALT, I encountered one very interesting dish. It's called Tonkotsu. I personally don't eat it, but I find it very interesting. It is pork shoulder, or in the culinary world, it's called pork butt. Uh, it's a pork shoulder, and it's a very tender piece of the pig, and it's uh, often served uh, with uh, brown sugar and miso, and it's often served on top of ramen noodles. So if you ever do get a chance to, go down, to come down to Kagoshima, please do not miss out on the tonkotsu. Uh, please enjoy our presentation. I'm going to pass it off to our last presenter. Hello everyone, my name is Carmen uh, and I am uh, in Miyazaki Prefecture. Do we have any Miyazaki Kyushu people? Anyone? Woo! Yay! All right! Okay, and um, I'm going into my third year with the JET program and uh, in the last two years I have to say the most interesting thing I have encountered so far have been Hachinoko bee larvae which um, I believe if, had they been fried, would have been um, you know nice and crunchy, they have kind of a peanutty flavor, but they were boiled with noodles, so quite interesting. But uh, it's a delicacy in the northern part of Miyazaki, so if you get a chance to uh, visit our lovely prefecture, um, please make sure to uh, enjoy this uh, delicious treat. Great, so uh, enjoy our presentation, move on to the next part. So we're going to give you a quick overview. This is uh, what we're going to have in store. We're going to have a part about eating out of Japan. We'll teach you etiquette, table manners, and types of restaurants and so forth. Uh, we have a chopsticks challenge. The first row is hey. walking up to the challenge, and then there'll be a prize if they win. So Ooh. come with it. Uh, we also have a section about grocery shopping, navigating through your local grocery shopping, and finding out, oh, also getting the bang out of your buck, or in Japanese, the yen. Okay? And the last part is a la cuisine, you know, cooking with ingredients that you find in a grocery store and what you can make out of it. So, we're going to present these. So the first off is eating on Japan, and that is Asher right here. Okay, so you may not be settled quite yet in your host city. First thing you're going to do, you're going to go out to some restaurants. And um, <clears throat> the most popular restaurants that you'll find uh, are the ones that I'm going to share with you right now. Um, and we'll start off with izakayas and traditional restaurants. Uh, Izakaya is a, is a pub style restaurant, a lot of uh, a la carte cuisine, and uh, comes with obviously as much alcohol as you can possibly order. And um, obviously first you're going to uh, enter the restaurant and you're going to be seated just like, uh, just like the restaurants that you're accustomed to in your home country. Uh, you'll be guided to your table and so on and so forth. And up until then it's going to be a very similar experience. However, the things where um, uh, Japanese restaurants start to differ is uh, possibly the very first couple steps in the restaurant. You will be shoeless, possibly, okay? So, uh, you will either take off your shoes at the gangpan, the entrance, or you'll take them off right before you enter uh, your personal room in the restaurant, and you'll leave your shoes there um, uh, while you're eating. And um, also, one note on shoes. Sometimes there may be special slippers just for the bathroom, okay? And it's a crazy look on the people's faces when you enter back into the tatami room with the bathroom slippers on. So make sure you leave those either outside of the bathroom or just right outside of the room, okay? And um, there's uh, also family restaurants. These are restaurants that um, have a wide array of uh, European style foods and also Japanese foods. Um, it's uh, budget friendly, friendly on the wallet. And um, um, you can, just like in izakayas, 
you may not be able to find a non-smoking section in the Pizzakaya, but uh, the family restaurants do offer the non-smoking and smoking section, and you can uh, tell the uh, host that as soon as you enter the restaurant. And one of the best parts about these family restaurants, some people say, are the drink bars. You can say, drink bar, please. It's about maybe 500 yen at the most. And you wow. can sit there till your heart's content, just draining your bladder and filling it up again. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of students come here to, uh, to study. I remember when I was uh, studying in Japan, I would often come to uh, Gusto, was my local family restaurant. And I would drink cocoa and tea and juice and soda and cocoa and tea. And juice and soda. Yes. So this is one thing that we can all enjoy at family restaurants. Um, next, something that's getting more and more popular probably in your host home countries as well as mine um, is the kaiten sushi, which is a conveyor belt sushi. This is a never-ending uh, consumption restaurant, and it's very, very fun. It's a really fun experience. Um, just like any other restaurant, you will be shown to your table. And the table has numbers corresponding to you know the bills that you will receive at the end of the meal, and um, sometimes if it's crowded, what do you know? You put your name on a waiting list, right? So, uh, and then when you get to your table, uh, can, you, can you change the size so you can take a look at this? It will be exactly, or possibly similar to this. You sit down. You got ginger right there. You got tea right there. You got wasabi, soy sauce, chopsticks, everything you need right in front of you, and just dish after dish after dish of fresh sushi. The good thing about sushi at Kaiten Sushi restaurants it is, is it's fresh that day. So it's gonna be the best stuff, all right? And um, if you can see the TV screen at the top left of the picture, it's okay if you can't navigate the kanji. There are pictures and you can just press and order stuff. I think at this particular Kaiten Sushi restaurant, this is Kappa Sushi, the particular orders come in on a little mini Shinkansen, a bullet train, it's really cute. <laughs> Also, fast food. Ah, this is a really fun one. And uh, if you don't like contacting, speaking with people at all, this is the place where you want to go. <laughs> so you walk in, right? Oh, can you, can you slide, change the slide to change? Um, you walk in and you have a vending machine right there for you. Most of the time they'll have pictures, so it's really easy to, to navigate. You put your money in, you choose that guy, you change, and a ticket will come out. And the ticket will have your order, uh, just right on there, so you go and find a seat. Usually it's a sort of counter style, and you hand it to the employee, and within minutes, your food is right there, steaming hot. And uh, popular dishes at these places is like a katsu, like a cutlet on top of rice, udon, soba, curry, things of that sort. Really simple stuff, fast, on the go, very accessible. Mm. So some useful expressions. First. We're going to introduce some things that will that will be uh, said upon your arrival, and you may feel very special your first couple times in a restaurant. Well, you are special. Okay, let's not forget that. Uh, when you come in, there will be an echo, maybe a roaring welcome. Irashaimase. 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 Once one employee hears it in the front, it'll like sort of bleed into the back of the kitchen. <laughs> even the kitchen, even the chef will welcome you. It's, it's, it's really fun. And um, then the host will ask you. Right? How many in your party? And you can either say, Hitori, Futari, Sanin, Yonin. Or if you're not quite there yet with your Japanese, which is totally understandable, you can go, <laughs> Right? That works. Gestures the world around, okay? And so now it's your turn. It's your turn to order, okay? So you've been seated, you've taken off your shoes. And you can say, this is the magic word, okay? I'm going to have you guys say this once, all right? Onegaishimasu. Onegaishimasu. Okay, so if you want anything, water, right? And your dish, your, your whatever you want to order, you say the thing, and then onegaishimasu. Uh, also, if you want a table, if you're maybe not so keen on uh, sitting down for your whole meal, which is understandable, um, or if you want a counter, if you're going for one, you can say table, onegaishimasu. Counter, onegaishimasu. And so on and so on. Also, for those who are uh, sensitive to smoke or those who are sensitive to getting smoke, um, uh, non smoking is kin en seki. Kin en seki. And then the magic word, which is? 
Okay, and if you want to smoke, Kitsuen Seki. Oh, I'm sorry, you're supposed to say the magic word. <laughs> Alright, so uh, that's just a quick rundown, okay? Uh, 